Oh, I love a chocolate pudding, particularly in the cooler months. And I'm going to make this chocolate pudding even better by adding vanilla. Some people think that vanilla and chocolate don't go together. They're separate flavours, but put them together. They are absolutely delicious. This is a self-sourcing pudding too. So it's going to be perfectly cooked on the outside and then gooey in the centre. First up, we need 200 grams of good quality dark chocolate for this recipe. And I'm going to chop this with a serrated knife. Just makes it so much easier to break up into smaller pieces. And I'm going to place this in a bain-marie with some butter. And by melting these together, we're going to get a luscious, silky sauce that's going to be the base of our delicious puddings. In that goes and a bain-marie is just a glass bowl over some simmering water. Just make sure that the bowl is not touching the water because if that happens it's going to be too hot and the chocolate may split. So we just want a gentle heat when we're melting our chocolate. In with the rest of this chocolate and I'll need 20 grams from an extra block of chocolate. Okay so I'm just going to roughly chop that. Now that the chocolate's in the bowl, we can also add the butter at the same time. So we'll pop that in. And then I'm just going to stir this from time to time, just to ensure that the chocolate and the butter are evenly distributed and evenly melting. Now while that's gently melting, I need to crack some eggs, six eggs all up. We need four yolks and two whole eggs. Okay, last egg yolk. Don't throw away these egg whites. They make fantastic omelettes or even freeze them for your next pavlova. And before I whisk in the other ingredients, let's have a look at this chocolate. Ooh, it's melted together nicely. I could drink that, it looks that delicious, but I better not. So we're gonna take it off the heat and just allow it to cool to room temperature. The key to these puddings is having everything at the same temperature when you mix it so we get the perfect batter. So in with the vanilla now, we need one tablespoon of vanilla bean paste. So we'll just roughly measure that out along with two tablespoons of caster sugar. And the rest of the sugar we're going to use for the self-sourcing side of this pudding. So we just need two tablespoons for now, along with two tablespoons of cocoa powder. Again, the rest is going to be used later. A good pinch of salt. Chocolate not only loves vanilla, but also salt. And then we'll break up those eggs and combine everything together. We don't want any lumps in this, so give this a good whisk. And now we can add our flour. And I'm just going to rain this flour in as I mix it. Again, the aim is to not get too many lumps and bumps in here. Okay, we've got a good consistency here. So now we can add our chocolate that's cooled down and pour that in. <sighs> chocolate on top of chocolate, so good. Scrape that down, in it goes. And again, we're just going to stir that in until it's completely combined. Okay, that is looking good. So let's place this in our Dario moulds. I'm using four three-quarter cup size Dario moulds. And we'll take that whisk out. And just using a large spoon, we're going to scoop this in. Now you don't want to fill it all the way to the top because it does have self-raising flour in it so it will rise slightly and we're also going to add some extra ingredients to it. So just leave a little space. Yeah. And I have buttered these moulds even though I'm not demoulding them it will just make it so much easier when it comes time to cleaning them. Okay now for the self-sourcing element of this dish we're going to combine some sugar along with the remaining cocoa powder. Give that a mix to combine. And now we're going to add about a tablespoon to each pudding. And the last one, perfect. And finally, some water. You need one cup of water and I'm going to distribute this. So a quarter of a cup 
in each. So what's going to happen when this starts to cook, that liquid or that chocolate water if you like is going to keep the cake super moist. It'll start to evaporate so we'll get that crust on the top of the puddings but it'll stay super saucy and protected in the centre. Now I've preheated my oven to 200 degrees and these are going to take about 15 to 20 minutes to cook. What we're looking for is that crust and a slight wobbliness in the centre. Okay, I've just taken these puddings out of the oven. I know they're cooked because you can see there's a crust and a slight little wobble or jiggle in the center. I'm gonna serve this one, they're still piping hot, so be careful. We'll just take that out of the tray. I'll pop it onto a plate. And just to make it look extra special, I'm going to adorn it with some icing sugar. And you can't have pudding without ice cream or some double cream. A generous dollop of that over the top. Oh yes, and make sure that cream is super cold. I love the contrast of cold cream and piping hot pudding. Now for the moment of truth, digging in to make sure it's self-sourcing. Oh, oh yeah, look at that. The goo factor, so perfect. It's gonna be really hot. Mmm, mmm, that's a goodie. That must be in your repertoire for your next dinner party, self-sourcing puddings. They're delicious. <laughs>